there is a power, there is a spirit so great that everything and everyone it touches. It touches for good. Today, in the gospel we just heard, we hear Jesus talk to his disciples in what is called the farewell discourse. He is approaching his end of time in this world. And he gathers his followers together to share with them once more the very heart the very spirit of his life and ministry. He says, love one another as I have loved you. There is no greater love than this, Jesus says, that a person would lay down his life for her life for friends. That spirit, that power, which is so great that everything and everyone it touches, it does so for good, is that spirit of love. It is the life of Jesus, which is a life of love. In everything Jesus says and in all that Jesus does, he communicates the reality of God, the nature of God, and God is love. God is that working for the very best in the other. Whoever the other is, friend, family, stranger, even enemy, love is always doing the best for the other. That is the spirit of Jesus. That is that power which changes everyone and everything for the good. And when we love one another, as Jesus shows us that love, we are one with God through Jesus. We abide in him. We live in him. And we know joy. That purest of joys. That abundant life that he describes in his teaching. Love one another as I have loved you. There is no greater love than this, that one would lay aside one's life for the other. I want to tell you a story. I first learned about a man called Ernest Gordon in a film called To End All Wars. And I was so inspired by that story that I found the book. I found Gordon's memoir. It's a book titled the same thing, To End All Wars. And you might have seen that film I know you saw another film, many of you did, which was inspired by the life, by the experience of Ernest Gordon. The Bridge Over the River Kwai. That was his story. A powerful story. Ernest Gordon was a captain in a British regiment called the Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders. And he 
served during the Second World War in the Pacific Theater. When the British surrendered to the Japanese in Singapore in 1941, all of those British troops, all of those Commonwealth troops who survived, were marched into Japanese prisoner of war camps. They were the most horrendous of places. They were places of cruelty, of unimaginable inhumanity, of torture and violence, of death, of starvation, of just such terror. Ernest Gordon writes about one of these camps, which was the camp where he spent four years of his life. It was in Thailand, and he writes about how he went into that camp as a nominal Christian at best. He'd been baptized in the Church of Scotland, but he didn't believe in Christianity, didn't believe in Jesus. He'd never lived a Christian life. If Ernest Gordon had a god, it was the god of reason and science. But it was not the god revealed in Jesus. The god of that love which changes everyone and everything it touches. But in the camp, Gordon began to see men who were not living for themselves. These were men who respected other people. These were men who loved one another. These were men who served others, who sacrificed for others, who served others who put others before themselves. These were men who practiced that love that they saw revealed in Jesus. Ernest Gordon was inspired by them. He was, when he arrived in the camp near death, and he went to a place called the Dead House. He went there, of course, to die. And it was there that he discovered this... Christian love, which he had never encountered in his life. And it was, it was a love that he experienced in these men who took such good care of him, who put his well-being ahead of their own. And it was these men and their example of that love that converted him to Christ. He began to read the New Testament. And as he read that New Testament, he writes in this memoir, his heart began to change and his actions began to change. And he recovered eventually and he became one of a team of men who took care of the sickest of the POWs, the prisoners of war. And in this memoir of his, which I commend to you, this memoir of his, he tells story after story after story of men who lived in the spirit and in the power of love, that divine love, that love that in the New Testament is called agape love. And he writes of that love in these words. We understood that the love expressed so supremely in Jesus was God's love. The same love that we were experiencing for ourselves. The love that is passionate kindness. The love that is passionate kindness. Other-centered rather than self-centered. Other-centered rather than self-centered greater than all the laws of men. That is the love of Jesus. That is that spirit of Jesus. That is that power of Jesus that changes for the good everything and everyone 
it touches. He tells many stories of people who are changed by that love. Just one. There was a fellow Argyle and Sutherland Highlander, an enlisted man named Duggar Green. And Duggar Green was, according to Gordon, the most miserable person he had ever encountered. He grew up, Duggar did, without any family. He grew up in poverty in Scotland, in Glasgow, I believe. He grew up without all of the benefits, including love, that people who grow up in families experience. And then Duggar Green became a captive of the Japanese. And he went into one of those POW camps. He went in as a dying man. There was no medical care available. Prisoners were dying of hunger and disease. And he was one of them. And Ernest Gordon befriended him and took care of him and encouraged him and shared his faith in Christ with him. Duggar knew that he was dying. And Ernest Gordon knew that, that he and perhaps even everyone in that prison camp would die at the hands of the Japanese. But Ernest Green or excuse me, Ernest Gordon shared with Duggar Green his conviction that God's love is more powerful than evil. And sin and suffering and pain and cruelty and death, it is a power more or stronger than all of that. Eventually, Duggar recovered sufficiently so that he was able to live for others, to respect others, to love others, to serve others, even to suffer with others. He took on the worst job in the prisoner war camp. And what he did every day, Ernest Gordon recalls, what he did every day was go from building to building, barracks to barracks, collecting all of the bandages, the bandages that were bloody, the bandages as inelegant as it is to say and for you to hear that were full of pus. He collected those bandages and when he did, he had a smile on his face and he whistled as he went about this ministry that he had taken on. And he took those bandages and cleaned them and boiled them and then took them back to the barracks from which he had taken them. That was his job. And that was a job that he found joy in. In loving these fellow prisoners in that way, he, Duggar, experienced a joy that he had never, ever experienced. It changed his life. That love of Jesus, that spirit of Jesus, that power of Jesus changed his life, Gordon's life, the lives of that, the life of that camp. And this is what Ernest Gordon says. We had two alternatives. We could choose the way of men based on the sovereignty of the natural order sealed and unpersonal, or we could choose the way of Jesus Christ, free and personal, based on the sovereignty of God the Father. The wind of the Spirit had blown upon us. We could not prove how or whence it had come, but our experience pointed to a source beyond ourselves. We knew personal fulfillment love, joy, peace, wholeness, as we committed ourselves to the one who had called us. 
Only as we responded to this word did we receive the power to progress towards true humanity. Our life on the horizontal plane, that is, life there in that POW camp, was made meaningful at the point where it was met by the vertical. And the vertical is the inbreaking of God's love into that camp and the outbreak of that love into the camp from person to person, soldier to soldier. At the point marked by the cross, we found ourselves. At the point marked by the cross, we found ourselves. And what is that cross? But God's reminder to us that He loves us. He loved all the men in that camp, even those Japanese captors. He loves all of us. And He demonstrates that love in giving up that which is most precious to Him, His only Son, who chooses to give up His life for us, to save us from our sins, to save us from our pain and suffering, to suffer with us, to save us from death itself. That's how much God loves us. And that love is that spirit, it is that power that changes for the good everyone and everything it encounters. It worked a miracle in that Japanese POW camp. It can work a miracle in our lives, in our church, and through us it can make a miracle in the world out there. Love is that power. It's the only power. It's the only spirit that changes for the good everything and everyone it touches. We are loved. We are, Kelly. We sure are. We are loved by a God of unending love. A God who sends us out into the world to walk in the footsteps of Jesus and to love as Jesus did. To love as Ernest Gordon learned to love. We understood that the love expressed so supremely in Jesus was God's love. That same love that we were experiencing for ourselves. The love that is passionate kindness. Other-centered rather than self-centered. Greater than all the laws of men. Love like that. If we love like that, we will know God and in God's presence we will know a joy that is beyond this world. Amen.